Hey, buddies! Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome back to Civilization VI as the Ottomans, where we're going to be finding out today whether or not we can do a little bit of war. Now, where we left off, we had kind of like rebuilt our empire a little bit. We had a little bit of trouble. We settled a few cities. You know, we had a couple of really big disasters. But I think by and large, I think we're in a fairly good position. Now, I did say at the end of the episode that I was going to check if culture industry was going to work. Now, do I want a heartbeat of steam? Campuses provide science adjacency. I actually have a decent amount of campuses. I think I need culture more than I need science. So I'm going to go ahead and take culture industry here. Um, because I need to get to nationalism in like a more reasonable time frame. Right now, my current pace to nationalism is very, very slow. We are going to have reformed church, though. And I think we do have some options for culture coming up in the near future. So I would say that generally things are looking OK. I, now, I think good would maybe be a little bit of a stretch. But OK, that's kind of that's kind of where I live. You know, I'm living in the OK zone. I think we trade with Tbilisi here. That's 8.7 gold. It's a little bit safer. I mean, trading with Congo is better, but it does go through this kind of spoopy area here. So I think I'm going to go ahead and trade with Tbilisi because it's a slightly safer trade route. Now, I think the main objective here for this episode is to try to, to get ourselves into a position where a little war is actually viable. That would be the ideal, the ideal outcome. The ideal position to be at the end of this episode is, you know, we're either at war or we're building the units that we're going to use in the war. Now, whether or not we get there, that's an entirely different proposition because right now I'm just doing a lot of unit stuff. Right, so there's cartography. We do have the Casa de Contracion. Contracion? I, I don't know how to say this, but I don't think we will be building this. We will be taking advantage of those fishing boats. And that actually gave us a significant amount of gold per turn because we have a ton of fishing boats throughout our empire and we will be acquiring more as the game goes on. I think it would be good to head towards banking the Grand Bazaar. I'd like to know a little bit more. I think I'm going to buy, upgrade two trebuchets um, at Reformed Church so that I can get the boost. Build a university in a city next to a mountain. That is something we can totally do. So let's go ahead and research square rigging. We're going to try to upgrade two crossbowmen and upgrade two trebuchets and build a university next to a mountain. So which city do I think I could do that in? the fastest. It's probably going to be Rhodes after the amphitheater. So that's what we'll do. Now, Adan has got a little bit of a loyalty problem. That's OK. We could just put Victor in there. And when this city finishes its monument, it'll it'll be in you know pretty good shape. It's growing hard right now. It's working a lot of food, which is exactly what we want it to be doing. More productive tiles. I definitely feel like I need to get a few builders over to Quila. So let's just kind of move some builders in that direction. And with cartography, we can actually go across the ocean now. So this Barbary Corsair potentially will find another continent. Potentially people who don't hate my guts, who would be more willing to trade with me. There's theocracy. So theocracy is a pretty significant upgrade. We're going to go into theocracy. Um, we're going to keep culture industry in. But we're going to plug in conscription to save money, as well as retainers to give us amenities. And now I'm feeling like I'm in a good position. I think the culture is worth more than the gold. So I think I'm happy with this. I'm not going to plug in Merchant Conf take out Merchant Confederation because I need the money more than I need anything else. There's a one tile island over here. So it, this is probably the final phase of the game that we want to consider potentially building more settlers if we do find like land that is viable to settle. So we've managed to complete the campus in Eritrea. I think we need to get these libraries up. We need to get our science up. We need to find a scientific city state, if at all possible, which is where this Barbary Corsair comes in. It's hunting, it's searching, it's seeking. Nice, we have access to the nitre. So that's two copies of nitre we have. Let's go ahead and buy this fishing tile for the capital. Boom. Give the city even more growth. Now it's got a 13 food surplus, which is absurd, but I'm totally happy for that. Um, that'll make Pingala scale really nicely in that city. Didn't do anything for the aid request. I'm totally okay with that. We managed to build a harbour in Adirne, so we go for the lighthouse because we want the plus one trade route and additional food on the crabs. The city will grow pretty quickly. I'm going to keep these two builders around roads because there is an active volcano kind of causing issues there that we want to be, want to be keeping abreast of. Can I sell anything? Oh, I could sell to the AI. A bunch of luxuries. Does that mean I can also purchase luxuries? Nope. What about strategics? Yeah, I have a lot of strategics I need to get rid of. So now we're up to 100 gold per turn. So the get, getting the grievances off our back is really, really helpful. If I could find more people to trade with, this would really blast the game wide open because now that I'm making 100 gold per turn, that's kind of in the realm of possibility where things can start to happen. Right, so there's divine right. We don't need to make use of monarchy. We could make use of Gothic architecture just on a temporary basis. And I think I will plug in Gothic architecture purely just so I can get my capital wonder slightly faster. It didn't actually speed it up all that much, to be honest. So that was actually a net negative. 
of. Um, it would be good to get diplomatic service just to be able to get spies. Spies are useful for wars. So let's get diplomatic service. We want to get that first spy out if we can. We also need to get, not foreign ministry, we're going to be going for Grandmaster's Chapel this game. And we're going to be going for Grandmaster's Chapel because it gives you the ability to purchase units with faith. It also provides a little bit of faith, which isn't too bad. And I think that is, on the whole, going to provide us with a lot more value than any other government plaza building. So roads, we're going to go ahead and build the university because we need to build a university adjacent to a mountain in a campus for one of the Eurekas, which is plus one error score as well. We do need to earn 50 era score here. And with the Barbary Corsair, there is a little bit of potential for that kind of a thing, especially if we discover the alternate continent. And this could this could blow the game wide open for us. So we are going to get Napoleon now, which means we just need to find an industrial era unit that we can actually use for war. Um, it'll be a little bit of time before we can get into the industrial era, but we can kind of beeline it a little bit. I'll do a little chop here in Quila. And what's the most important thing that this city needs to do for me? Honestly, I just need culture. So if I could just get a theatre square down with a little bit of an extra adjacency adjacent to a government plaza, I think that's a totally viable move. Oh, another continent has been discovered. Another player has been discovered. Nice to meet you, Christina. So, Christina, you have honey and you'll sell it fairly cheap. You don't hate my guts. She wants to buy my turtles. I'll sell her turtles. Anyone want to buy my luxuries? Oh, you do. Sorry, not my luxuries, my strategics. So she wants to buy all my iron. I'm going to take that deal. That gold per turn is going to be invaluable. And now we have serious gold potential. I might be able to buy the shipyard of my capital in a couple of turns, actually. And buying the shipyard of my capital would feel really amazing. It would do me so much good work. Dude, look at that. We actually have the gold right now to get the shipyard. So that's going to be three production as well as plus one production to all unimproved tiles in this city, um, which is going to work really nice when we actually get the mausoleum going. So we've got ironclads here. Um, let's go ahead and dig down into siege tactics. Mm, I need to do I need to do a little bit of tech shuffling here. I need to save up my gold and I need to plug in the cheaper cheaper unit upgrading card. Let me make sure every single city has a garrison unit because every garrison unit is worth an amenity to me. So we managed to get the granary in the city of Halep. This isn't, isn't a particularly accomplished or powerful city, but I think it'll do the job. Let's get that campus going. Do I want to start pre-building units? I don't think the time is nigh. We're going to be going up against field cannon power. Now, if we think about what a field cannon's power level is, um, the base power level of a field cannon is 60, so it'll be about 64 for the AI. That means we probably want at least a bombard cores just to be able to tank a hit. Looking at the city of Adana, I definitely feel like we place a harbor here. That's a plus four harbor. That just feels natural to me. Then... There's a fairly decent campus here. It's a plus two. We'll have to wait on that. I'll quickly build a water mill while we wait for that. Ooh, finding Anshan. That's actually huge technology. We pop a, a, a single envoy into Anshan actually gets us like five signs per turn. Huge tech boost. We don't have any great work, so we don't really benefit from their suzerain bonus. Um, but that's not particularly important. Now, if units are half price, I think this could be a good time for us to build units. In particular, spamming out like a ton of siege units. Don't forget our siege units are better and we build them faster. So units are cheaper right now. So at some time in the next few turns, I think this is the time to start pre-building. Uh, we do have Machiavellianism, Vissel Banking, Chancery. I could lose eight gold per turn to go for Machiavellianism. I think that's a reasonable amount of gold to lose so that I can make use of my spies. Kanye, you managed to build a campus. I would love to start getting the Grandmaster's Chapel right now, but I think you're going to go ahead and build a spy for me really quickly because we can use that spy to catapult our empire forward. We're going to go ahead and research humanism because I want to know what these three texts are. I'm digging for nationalism is what I'm doing. I'm looking for nationalism. So Eritrea has managed to build a library. And I think at this phase of the game, why is the armory only plus one production? Wait a minute. What? Excuse me? Does anyone know why the armory is saying it only gives one production? It's three production over here, one production here. Why? Why would that be? What the hell? Can anyone explain this to me? Regardless, we're going to start building trebuchets. I forgot to plug in the cheaper unit card. That's okay. Let's upgrade a trebuchet and build a trebuchet. I'll spend a little bit of extra cash for that. I don't mind. So I think trebuchets and cuirassiers is got, are going to be the play that I make here. Unfortunately, I didn't get a Renaissance era great general, which makes this a little bit more difficult. But we did discover another player. This is you. I'll send you an embassy, actually, because that could be quite powerful for us. I don't have either of these luxuries, so I'll buy them off you. I'm pretty sure I don't have them, actually. Okay, that's a ton of extra luxuries. Um, she actually wants a friendship. I'm going to go ahead and see if we can get a military alliance with her because that will open up potential for me to conquer my own continent. These guys have way better stats than anyone else I've met in the game. Uh, but this is just partially due to the fact that they're isolated and they don't have to deal with real problems. Um, we may send a bunch of Barbie Corsairs over there depending on how what kind of level of quality their coastal tiles are. I'm seeing like potentially actually really, really good, really, really good pillages here. Wow, where are your harbors? If she had harbors, that would be like the easiest war in my life. We've got the temple in here. We've got synagogues. We've got universities. 
We've got no production in here. Three production in this armory. And yet one production here. I'm just, I'm very confused by that. What a, what a strange thing. Um, I would love to build an armory in here because that's like a 30% production boost in this city. And when we eventually make friends with Kabul at level two, that would be another four production in this city. So this actually, this is actually seven production for Athens for unit production. So I think we will go for the armory. It's going to, we have to do that little bit of mental math to kind of figure out what are the breakpoints and like real, real actual value impacts oh she denounced me immediately well thankfully i did get open borders and you know we can always go to war with her what's she gonna do against my barbary corsairs do you know what i mean i don't think there's much she can do she's not really suzerain of anything i care about i mean ooh, no i'd lose kegwana i'm gonna make peace with iuthia i don't know how i'm still at war with them to be honest with you has me that that one has me a little bit confused she really just does not have much in the way of coastal infrastructure for me to pillage but i still think a war with her might be fine because it'll at least hurt her empire so the mausoleum of Halicarnassus, plus one science, plus one faith, plus one culture, and all coastal tiles and great engineers have an additional charge. We're not going to really make much use of the engineer part of that. I didn't actually mean to finish metal casting. That's what we call an unforced error. So with the mausoleum, this city now looks a lot better. Like it just, it just has more zhuzh. We have an encampment, we have a harbour, we're missing culture. There is a plus three theatre square here. We could really use that culture. We could really, really use that culture. Now, on the other hand, if we went for a Colossus here, this would be a plus four. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work for not much gain. Armory. I could also build the armory in here and actually build units in a reasonable amount of time. Congo's science is kind of skyrocketing. God, if I had literally anyone else as a neighbor. And then the continent formations are also just like really obnoxious. I think we're, I think we're waiting for artillery with, um, with observation balloons. And if we're waiting for artillery with observation balloons, then we need more science and we need more culture. So I'll get my theater square here tentatively. And let's see if I can purchase any great works. I'll buy those luxuries for sure. But let's see if I can find any great works of writing. I'll buy you. I'll buy you. I'll buy you. There's three great works of writing. That's six culture per turn. It's like having three more monuments. Oh yeah. No, there's definitely potential pillaging going on in here. Um, To the point where I'm going to go ahead and claim this great admiral. I'm going to go ahead and make an ironclad. That's steel boosted. So I very clearly have a mine on a tile that'll eventually become coal because I haven't revealed coal and I got the boost for iron for steel, which requires you to build an ironclad and have a mine built on a coal mine. But I haven't revealed coal, but I've very clearly built on coal because I'm getting the benefit of the coal mine. It's an interesting thing. So I know that I have coal, which is, you know, a helpful, useful thing to know. Unless the check is like, literally, do you have coal income? And then that, that'd be kind of an interesting one. So the theater square here may actually get replaced for a couple of Barbary Corsairs because there is... If I were to get like two more Barbary Corsairs, I think we could do some real damage, like pillage, 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 pillage. Like there's actually a significant amount of pillaging to be done to Wilhelmina here. And our empire just keeps on going. And any of these city-states that go to war with me, they also just become viable pillage targets. So there's humanism. I don't think there's anything really important here for us, except for the great work buildings, which are just handy extra culture. Oh, there's nationalism. That's huge. So we'll be able to start combining units. And additionally, we'll get another spy. That spy will come in very, very handy. We finished a bombard in here. Let's get the armory. If you're going to go into unit production, then you should get your armory. We could probably drown Congo in bombards. The problem is I have Napoleon. And Napoleon only applies to industrial, not Renaissance era units. So the real time that I need to attack is when I get to steel. I could rush steel. The problem would be the oil. Oil is revealed by refining. Refining needs you to build a coal power plant. Building a coal power plant requires you to build two workshops. I think we, I think we can push Congo. Let's do it. Right, let's get Grandmaster's Chapel. We'll get a spy established in Mbanza, Congo. Let's start the great migration of units. We'll start moving our units down towards the front line at a potential war here. I think we, we might be in a position to make something happen here. Nice, there's the trebuchet. So I want this city to build um, very, very cheap garrison units for me. So if you could get me some skirmishers, that'd be great. And these skirmishers will free up, um, in particular, these chariots and these catapults from garrisoning for amenities. And then eventually they will serve as special forces that I can airdrop onto my enemies. Oh, nice little islands for us to potentially settle. Okay, so I think we're ready to declare war on Wilhelmina, purely as an avenue to pillage her coastline with our thingies. We're not actually looking to do real damage to her economy. We're mostly looking to do light damage to her economy and get some value out of that. We've got the amphitheater. Uh, sorry, we've got the theater square completed in Quila, so we're going to get to work on the amphitheater because we definitely want the extra culture. Taking a stock of our position, we are still behind Congo, but I think we're in a position to threaten him. And that's honestly all we need to be in, is in a position to threaten. We found another city-state, Yerevan, very cool. We also found... Who is this? Scythia, more Scythia stuff, okay. Renaissance walls are completed. 
we're getting to work on military service. This will give us military academies. Those are going to be very helpful, actually, for our late game production. We are going to be producing a lot of late game stuff. I may go for military academies, probably not right away in every city, but it'll be like, I'll probably try to have a city. Well, maybe we do go. Maybe we go for just like we're going all in on military stuff. I don't know. I'm not sure. Regardless, very soon things are going to be changing here. I will be declaring on the Netherlands in a formal war that this war exists to pillage. That's all we care about. So this frees up a catapult, putting an archer in this city. Do I have any more low quality units? Not really. All right, let's bring these catapults out of retirement. Just get... I need um, one, two, three, four... I need five skirmishers. That's one, two, three, four, five. There we go. Five skirmishers on the way. Uh, no, I actually need six because there's another city here, Konya, with a garrison catapult slash bombard. Another Barbary Corsair to send off to our friend. You're garrisoned. You're exploring for me. Hopefully we'll find value from that explorer. Come in here, pillage the harbour, coastally raid, and then step away. So, huge amount of value. We really need to change our government here. Do you know what? I think we're taking out conscription and retainers, and we're plugging in raid and veterancy while we build up our military economy. So, these garrison units actually aren't that important anymore. And now we can just unlock all units and send them to the front line. Yes, that does hurt our gold income. But I think that's fine. We just need to get our gold income back up. We're, we need to save all our gold. We can't really spend it. That is one thing that I will say, is we do not have the luxury of spending gold right now. So let's have a look. What else could we pillage? We could step in here, coastally raid this. That's 50 gold. Nice. Now that doesn't get boosted by the card, unfortunately. But still, that's 50 gold. And every chunk of gold that we can secure for the future is a big win. Now, one thing that might hurt our prospect for war is potentially here. All right, you got your armory. Very nice. Now I could make Barbary Corsairs, but go ahead and build me some bombards. Bombards are like, bombards are my saves thing. I'll just spend a little bit of cash to place that campus because it's good long-term investment. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I'm going to be real with you. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I was saying something relevant and important, um, but it just it just completely went out of my head, and which probably tells you just how relevant and important it really was. You know, if, if you know, it probably was relevant and important. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be gaining sources here. Now, let's have a look. So he has the intel advantage right now. But if we can get ourselves printing, we can flip that relationship on its head. Where am I getting my second university? Probably in Kanye. We'll see. So it's all starting to come to a head, right? We're building up to a moment of war. Is this a finished dam? It is, which means it's very pillageable. That's 351 gold. Another... 175 faith and another 175 faith and 50 gold. Remember, every time we pillage something, we also get a little bit of gold out of it. So like we're we're doing well with that Barbary Corsair. Dude, Barbary Corsairs are actually kind of insane. I think I never really respected them as a unit, but I, I, I can see the error of my ways. My troops are merely passing by, so I'm pretty sure as long as units are inside my border, they can be within three tiles of the Congos. So now I have no units breaking the promise because they're inside my border. It's when you put units on someone else's border and they're not inside your country. That's when the AI gets like super antsy. So there's a Dezeven Provincian here um, and we don't want to tangle with his unique boats, with her unique boats. So I'm going to bring my Barbary Corsairs up to merge and see if we can make something happen there. Right, plus one error score for discovering civil engineering, or sorry, for discovering nationalism. We boosted civil engineering. Now, nationalism is really, really good for a couple of reasons. First of all, it means we can now start to combine some of these units together that we weren't able to do before, like so. This will improve the overall quality of our army. Now, I had, a, I feel like I had a bunch more chariots. So this will also help our boost towards mobilization, which could allow us to navigate our way towards that. So how many techs would it be? It would be seven techs for mobilization. That'd be a little bit harder. However, I would really like to get colonialism. And that's because colonialism gives you fishing boats plus one production. And I have a significant amount of fishing boats in my empire. I don't really care about the rest of these things, but that's kind of like starting to formulate and coalesce into my, my game plan. We are missing a trader. I think one of my traders was killed, which is obviously not good. Let's see, let's have a look at the available route. So Adirne to Mabanza Congo. We want to trade with someone else. So Sivas to Tbilisi is really high gold per turn. Yeah, so I think trading trading with um trading with Georgia seems like a good move here in the in the, the next little while. So I think I will look to do that now. I'm happy to spend this money because this trader will pay itself off very quickly. It looks like Pingala was neutralized, which is fine. We'll get him back soon. That does hurt my culture and science on a like far reaching if temporary basis okay so this is the trader i'm going to move one to sivas no sorry i already have one in sivas damn it it's meant to go to Edirne. so we want to play sneaky here and not get caught by the netherlands boats i don't think we win a straight up fight 
which is why I want to avoid combat and try to just get like these cheeky little pillages for gold. I've got a ton of envoys in the bank. Uh, we don't have that many universities. I wish there was a mod that would tell you how many universities you have. Like how much would you benefit from this? That would be really, really cool. I would like to put a point into Kabul. This means my armories are a lot better. It would be nice to be suzerain of Kabul and Preslab. I think those are like my two number ones. I think it would also be nice to put a point into Ayutthaya because that's a little bit of culture. I have a few amphitheaters, so I'll do that. And I'm not looking to optimize my... Yeah, I'm not looking to optimize my... um. My thingy situation, my envoy situation. Normally I would, but in this particular game, I don't think it's especially important for my long-term outcomes. We have combined our units together. More units are on the way to get combined. Let's trade with Tbilisi. So that was the plan. And then this one, I want to move to a Derne. That will be all of my trade routes accounted for. Nice, we found Nazca too. So we could actually make some really good use of this desert if we got Susan to have Nazca. That's going to be a long-term goal though. Another Barbary Corsair has been finished. Do we want to continue down the Barbary Corsair route or do we want to go for the Armory? It'd be nice to get an industrial zone. Let's have a look at the city overlap map mode. So an industrial zone in Rhodes would suit me really, really well. This would hit eight cities. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven cities. This hits like most of my cities right here. So even though it's not a particularly good industrial zone, we will be building it there. We do need to make sure that the city can grow. And I think an aqueduct as a follow up to this market is the right move to allow the city to get the housing that it needs because it has the food. It just needs to actually get the housing room. And if we're going all in on unit production, I think getting my armories now is the move. Eritrea has its armory. Start to produce bombards. Have I unlocked cuirassiers yet? No, we're getting to that point. So we might want to start thinking about that too, is building knights. Building knights will open up opportunities for us in the next era uh, because we'll be able to upgrade to cuirassiers and I'll do all that sort of nice jazz. I want you to trade with Tbilisi. This is a pretty safe trade route. Nice. Um, we're doing pretty good on the cash front. Pingala will be available in four turns. Let's combine you two together. This gives you a better chance of survivability. Plus, it's plus two error score. We could also potentially go for railroads here. Although before we go for railroads, we're going to need the actual coal itself. So I think what we do is to continue to produce bombards. If we can't afford bombards, we go for trebuchets because units are half price right now. That is something for us to keep in mind. Units are cheaper than usual. So units represent like this is like a really good opportunity to pre-build the units that we need for the future. That is a battleship. It has 90 combat strength on the offense. We absolutely can't get caught out by this. It will do... It can one-shot us. No, sorry. It has 70 combat strength. It can do a ton of damage. We would need a couple of these guys to take this on. We would need three Barbary Corsairs to take him on because he has a significant advantage. But that's okay. Remember, we're not actually looking to fight on the seas. We're looking to dip dodge and, 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 and kind of run them around. So there's a military academy. We will be building a military academy in our probably strongest production cities just because of the sheer amount of bonus production that this can represent, right? The, the building itself brings in four production and then potentially up to another six if we can get our relationship up high enough with Kabul and Preslav. Um, and I think that is a 10 production building. I think you'll be hard pressed to find anything as efficient as that. So it'll take about 33 turns for it to pay itself off once we get it up and running. I don't know why buildings in this are worth less. <laughs> why is the city just producing less production? I don't understand. I don't understand. Does anyone know why? Why is my, is this a bug with the card? I think this is a bug with the plus two production from Golden Age card. What a strange bug. It's just making the city worse for the rest of the game. Nice. I would love to pass an aid request. I'm just never going to have the diplomatic favor for it. We definitely take astronomy here. We definitely take banking. Having the Grand Bazaar would be handy. We definitely want printing. There's so many things that we have to, to kind of like carefully navigate and manage and, and get around and do what we need. I think we can do a little bit of cash stealing here. I'm going to come into my capital and get spies. I need this spy. There's no two ways about it. But the good news is I'll be in a really good position to do a little bit of pillaging here. And I do have good faith banked to buy the units that I need. Scythia is denouncing me. That's fine. I could declare war on her. She's kind of in an awkward place too if I got a few Barbary Corsairs on the coast. So that's kind of like in the direction of possibility here. Um, right, we got a couple of really good techs here. Colonialism is boosted. Very nice. I might just start producing some Barbary Corsairs to harass Scythia as well. She's weak, she's vulnerable, she has a ton of coastline. I could level my boats up against her. So we have colonialism. We definitely need to get to mobilization. How badly do I want civil engineering? I'm not really making use of serfdom or gothic architecture. So let's take out both of these cards. And instead, do we want to keep culture industry or do we want to get rid of it? Ooh, reform the coinage, that's a ton of gold. Two arms, quite good. 15% military unit production. Um, plus one production in all cities. And I guess Harbour District Adjacency Bonuses is actually like a pretty efficient card for us to plug in here. Now we are going to be heading into a Dark Age. So anything that's taking more than 10 turns to finish, 
is probably off the limits. Um, and we need to have units positioned all around my empire for the counterattack. We're going to be doing a little bit of internal warfare next era. But my hope is if other players are also not in a dark age, then the possibility of a successful war just goes up to like infinity. So I'm going to be finishing what little bits of infrastructure that I can right now and then looking to build a bigger army. All right, you pop in here, pillage this, pillage this, pillage this, pillage this, step here, pillage this, step here, sit here. You should be safe there as long as you don't get spotted. And the possibility of you getting spotted is, is not zero. Okay, he was spotted somehow. Unlucky. Still got major value out of that doesn't really matter that he was caught it's hard to replicate that kind of value right let's get trebuchets you got your armory trebuchet library anything that takes nine turns or less because we're not stopping this dark age we just need to be ready for the consequences of it and that means building a ton of siege units to fight back what unit do we have unlocked unfortunately we have line infantry unlocked so that's what's going to spawn which is 65 combat strength units really not good don't love that being real with you uh, i need to check out my loyalty map mode because the cities with the least positive loyalty are going to be the ones that will flip we are going to lose 40 percent of our cities now i don't know if that rounds up or down i'm going to assume that it rounds up that means if we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve cities twelve multiplied by 0 0.4 conformed up is zero point is, is five it was 4.8 cities so we're going to lose five cities so the five cities with the lowest loyalty are adana quila Aderne, Sivas. So those are four. And then anything. So Erzurum. I really don't want Erzurum to flip. So I may on a very temporary basis just put Pingala in that city. No, that's a terrible move. We should optimize. Erzurum's going to be a pain in the ass to take back. But if we're if we're well positioned to take back Adana and stuff like that, I think we'll be fine. So let's set up siege on the edge of our in internal borders. That's important. Gentle eruption. Oh, God. It says gentle, but it like obliterates everything in the local area. Thankfully, I had a couple of builder charges on single charge builders ready to come around and fix things. We definitely want access to cuirassiers. Um, we got the library in here. We want to get the university as well. No, we just need units now. God, I can't even make line infantry. I'm just, I'm very nighter starved. Nine turns left on this. That's fine. I don't love that Aderna is flipping independent because I've invested so much in the shipyard production wise, which doesn't feel good. I'd love, yeah, I'm going to wait a turn and then I'll start looking to promote my units. So let's go ahead and change some policies here. We're going to take out raid. We're going to take out veterancy. Instead, we're going to plug in the retinues card as well as professional army. This will make it much cheaper to upgrade my units. So for example, this heavy chariot will only be 320 gold and 20 iron, which is the base cost of upgrading a single chariot to knights. Uh, that'll be one of our big focuses is getting chariots out. I'd love to build this grand bazaar, but I can't afford to right now because I need a bigger military. And the knight is going to be the unit that rules the day. I'm going to sell one point of Niter. That way I'll end up on 19 Niter in two turns instead of 20. And I don't want to have 20 Niter in the bank when I'm building any trebuchet. So when this trebuchet finishes, um, basically I want to be, because I want to start upgrading my catapults, my trebuchet, I'm sorry, I want to start upgrading my trebuchets to, to bombards. And it's the same cost in Niter to build a single bombard, which when you're building a trebuchet, it gets automatically upgraded into a bombard when you have 20 niter in the bank. So that's why I'm getting rid of a point of niter. As it is, when you have these two cards plugged in, it's the same cost to build a trebuchet or build a bombard and niter than it is to upgrade a catapult core into a bombard core. So it just it's more resource efficient to do it the way that I'm trying to do it right now. It requires like a little bit of manipulation for the game. It's annoying, I will say that, because I'm not actually fully in control of what the game is doing with my resources which I don't love. Mega Colossal Eruption here, of course, that city gets obliterated, that's fine. We got the harbour in Sivas, the city's flipping independent, so it doesn't matter what we do with it. Now, my prediction of which cities that are going to flip independent may not be perfect, I accept that, but I think they're pretty good best guesses. One thing you can do is right before the cities flip independent is steal all their tiles. I'm not going to do any shenanigans like that, I think that's a little bit too... We're optimising a little bit too much there at that point. Nice, we stole a thousand gold for Kong from Congo. We have a ton of gold. Can I actually purchase? I'll take another couple of great works off you. Can I purchase any um, strategics? In particular, I'd really like to buy a little bit of niter. No one has niter for sale. So for one single turn, we're going to build a heavy chariot in the city of Adana so that we, when we tick up to 20 niter, we're not actually building a trebuchet in any city. So no city will automatically upgrade into a bombard and I'll be able to upgrade one of these catapult cores into a bombard. It's like a little bit of a complicated dance that you have to do. So we have 20 niter in the bank. Let's go ahead and get another bombard core. Excellent. Now, 
our bombards have five plus five combat strength against cities so we'll be looking to make use of that and now you can come in here and finish that trebuchet we're up to 890 military strength we managed to finish the spy in our capital i think i'd like to go steal cash from someone tbilisi 500 congo 800 and then yeah i think i guess we're stealing from you so you built the spy in the capital. Um, the capital is probably never going to really be a unit production house. So let's continue to get Barbary Corsairs in here because I just think they're going to be useful. My whole empire is building units right now. We managed to circumnavigate the world. We weren't the first to do it, but I will take the three era score because that'll actually take the edge off the loyalty problem we'll have next era. The old tactical dark age. Now the unfortunate downside of all this is that this is a very micro intense build that I'm doing where I have this many units and stuff that I'm like managing because the sheer number of things that I've built. But what can you do about that? Now, I am at war with Nalanda, so I could potentially sneak in here and pillage this harbour at little to no cost to myself. I'm also going to pillage this Beatty because it's a little bit of faith. We've got two turns left on the era. Let's keep up the chariot spam. Remember, chariots are really, really good because they're, they're tanky, they're tough, and they're fast. So I'll be able to run them deep into enemy territory and do a ton of pillaging. And they upgrade into one of the best units in the game, the tank. Can I safely level up these Corsairs fighting these independent cities? I'm hoping so. We are going to find out though. Ooh, that was a mistaken pillage. I forgot that pillaging actually does use up the movement of the Barbary Corsair. So that Barbary Corsair is dead. Oh no, he barely escaped with his life. Okay, so we got away with that. Now I want to take loot. You're going to level up. And next turn, this is the, the turn that we learn. Have we effed around and have we found out? My hope is that on a scale of effing and finding out... I'm pretty, uh, I'm actually going to be good. We'll see though. You never know. You never know how the, how it's going to happen. So here comes the Dark Age. The brutal, brutal Dark Age. We're over a thousand military strength now. So we've built up a significant power level, which is just fantastic. Oh, we can sneak in here, grab that lumber mill. That's another chunk of gold. And we can sneak back out, pillage this as well. God, we're getting so much gold from this steel. Something is killing our GPT. I think it's the fact that all our deals have run out. How long until these deals run out? In six turns, our GPT will fix itself. That That's good. That's good. That's good. We're kind of living on borrowed time with our economy. And here comes the rebellion. Okay, actually, it rounded down. It rounded down to four cities. So only four cities have flipped, um, which is a much more optimistic uh, and usable position. So let me double check the exact way this works. A plus four combat strength, but not in a golden age or heroic age against civilian civilizations that are also not in a golden age or heroic age. Unfortunately, Congo is in a golden age. However, Wilhelmina is not. Um, but Congo is in a golden age, which means we're not going to get the combat strength against Congo. I was kind of hoping for that, but that's not the end of the world. We can work with this. Now, if we take a look at the combat strength of this line infantry, he is a 65 base strength unit. You're going to get shot by that city as well. Let's try to retreat you to a safe position. Move you to there. Uh, let's deal with Adirne first. We're going to deal with this. No okay, you know what? We're going to deal with all this in the next episode. I love you all very much. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.